Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy and your church throughout the world, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seeds of humans and the seeds of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set at edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. When I took them by the hand, I'm sorry, it will not be like the covenant that I made them with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. 
I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall know all me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. And I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Glory to the Lord. This is a reading from Timothy. As for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, encourage the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but will have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers, to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, and carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord.
the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Stewardship Sunday, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to start with all the sermons that you're not getting today. Uh, I, 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 I wanted to preach a sermon maybe on the prophet Jeremiah today, and I love that phrase in that beautiful reading from the Old Testament where uh, through the prophet God talks about inscribing his very law on our hearts what a powerful image the idea that god literally inscribes engraves onto our very hearts his loving powerful uh, life-giving presence and teaching so you're not getting that sermon but that would have been a good one uh, uh, i also am not giving you the sermon on second timothy today where saint paul talking to his young mentor e uh, timothy uh, is telling him about, you know, now pay attention to scripture, you know, it's good for teaching and training, for correction and reproof, for growing in righteousness, and there's a whole sermon there about the role of scripture in how it forms our life and our hearts. You're not getting that sermon either. And then in the gospel today, uh, we have that parable that Jesus uh, teaches us about uh, the, the the woman, the widow, who comes and just keeps demanding persistently for justice. And as I thought about that story, I was thinking, would it be interesting to think of the God character in the story, not as the judge, but as the widow? That sermon you're going to get someday, <laughs> but you're not getting it today. <laughs> so instead, what you're getting today is a stewardship sermon. And this is the, you know, every once a year or so, the priest gives the stewardship sermon. And I, I know this is the way it sometimes feels to some people. Oh, yes, the priest is going to talk about money, he does that once a year, and we all sort of sit back, and inside we're gritting our teeth a little bit, and we're going to grin and bear it, uh, and here it is, and okay, you know. Uh, so I want to just give voice to that. And, and just say, I, I really do want to, though, hopefully in some fresh ways, talk about from a theological standpoint and a personal and practical standpoint, 
what's this all about with our giving? And how does God get connected to it? Um, so indulge me and open your, your hearts um, to a fresh maybe take on, on all of this. So the first thing I always want to say when I speak about stewardship and when I think about it is that we speak often about our giving to the church or giving to God. And, and I want to say that that's not quite right. Uh, I think the more precise way to frame this is our giving back to God. Because stewardship always, for me, begins with an awareness that God first has given us everything. He's given us this you know, amazing, beautiful, Christ-soaked creation to live in uh, as a gift to us. He's given us individually the gift of our lives, uh, of our breath, uh, of the love that surrounds us on every side, uh, the joys and the challenges, the fullness of human life and life lived with each other and community and family. God's given us all this. You know, God's given us everything we have, the, our, our breath, our, our very being. And so when we're speaking about giving to God, we really are speaking about giving back to God, uh, recognizing that God always takes the initiative, as it were, in giving to us, and we're just returning what has been blessedly and lovingly given to us. So that's where I begin uh, with stewardship. My next place that I go to when I think about stewardship is I think about God taking what we give back to God and truly blessing it. One of my favorite moments in the service, and I know this gets overlooked, I think, by us because maybe we don't put quite enough emphasis on it, is you know, when the offering plates are brought forward to the altar. And today, Father Ben is the celebrant, and when I'm the celebrant, you know, we take the plate and we lift it up to God for God's blessing uh, on it. And then God takes this and makes something amazing, life-giving happen through the ministry of St. Gregory's. Uh, and uh, our giving uh, is, is, is blessed by God, and the world is fed, not just material, but spiritually, through what God does here at St. Gregory's. And truly, it's, it's a miracle. I also want to say something about um, our attitude and approach to giving, giving back. Uh, I realize that when we give, there's often a kind of clenching that goes on in us, a little bit of a, oh, you know, this is our money, we worked hard for it, you know, we've got kids in college, we've got mortgages, we're looking for our retirement, we don't want to spend our money before, you know, we die, and, you know, all these pressures that we have, and gosh, you know, you know, there's this, you know, resistance and reluctance that it's like swimming upstream sometimes, I think, uh, when, it, when it comes to giving, giving back. Um, and, and I just want to remind you of that verse, because it's a beautiful verse, where God says, God loves a cheerful giver. And uh, it's such a simple verse, but it, 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 it sort of challenges us to, to look at um, what's our attitude in giving? You know, is it, is it something that we're a little reluctant about or hesitant about, or is it something that really flows from a deep place of gratitude, a, a response to God's love a, a, to us? And, and is that the exchange um, the mercy that's happening in, in, in our giving, uh, and where are we at with our attitude in giving. So I want to 
suggest that that might be something that we all, myself included, look at. Um, uh, are we giving with gratitude and joy, or is there reluctance? And if there's reluctance, what's that all about? The fourth thing I want to say is I want to say something about um, tithing. Uh, Anita and I have, and tithing, of course, is the biblical standard of giving 10% of, of your life back to God. Uh, and when Anita and I started out in seminary, I don't think we were really tithers at that point, but um, when we got out of seminary, we started tithing. You know, I was the young priest, and I thought, I got to model this for the church, you know, be a good steward and all that. And, you know, and, I, and, I, and really that tended to be my motivation uh, at that point, at least for myself. And Anita maybe was probably much more faithful. And uh, um, I'm going to tell you something that everyone who's a, as a tither will say. And, and if there's any tithers out there, you just give me a big head shake and you give me a high five later on and something. And that is that when we become tithers, it, it's actually such a freeing, blessed, and joyful thing. It, it really is. And it's a, it's a mystery because for many of us, that 10% seems like, whoa, that's a bridge too far. Uh, um, but um, for those who are there, uh, I can just give the testimony that there is a, an immense joyful blessing in, in this. And, and let me just suggest that, you know, if, if the tithe feels just uh, a little too far at this point, maybe look at your own giving and say, okay, um, maybe I can just reach that next level of, of giving out of gratitude and joy and use it as a kind of guide and encouragement and uh, for, for my giving. Uh, so I want to just offer you that. And, and as you reflect on that, I want to have you take a look at a verse this week in the Bible. When's the last time anyone in this congregation was reading the book of Malachi in the Old Testament? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> you know, that's not a book of the Bible. That's not a go-to. You know, take me to John. I'll, I'll read Luke. You know, I'll read some of the letters of Paul. You know, Psalms are great. When have we been in Malachi? But let me direct you to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Uh, and literally, look it up. It's in there. Uh, and uh, in this verse, God said something really interesting. He, he's, he's complaining that when you withhold tithes, you're cheating God. Uh, so it's a kind of a, that's a really interesting way to think about it. But, but then he says, test me. This is the part I like. Test me and give to me and see what happens. Uh, and that's what God says. I mean, literally, you look it up. You can read it tonight and pray about it this week. T test me and see what happens. I see Joe Graff looking at her Bible app, if I'm guessing what you're doing there, Joe. <laughs> uh, and, and it's in there, you know, and, um, and meditate on that verse. God really says with our giving, see what happens when, when you go to a, a, a place of generous, cheerful, gratitude, giving back kind of giving. Okay, now let me add one more kind of perspective on, on stewardship. And we're getting near the holiday season, at least if you're going into the stores. Um, and uh, one of my favorite holiday movies is the classic, It's a Wonderful Life. Doesn't everyone love that movie? Frank Capra classic, Jimmy Stewart, you know, it's, it's the best. Uh, and you, I'll just remind you if anyone doesn't know the movie, but Jimmy Stewart plays George Bailey, this earnest, faithful guy who's always looking to, you know, maybe break away and travel and experience the world, but he keeps kind of getting back to working for his dad, his dad who's built this savings and loan, and it's always on a shoestring, and then he takes over for his dad, and um, he's just a, a good man, um, but life just doesn't always come easy to him. 
And as the movie progresses, uh, you know, there's a crisis in the savings and loan, the economy's falling apart, and George Bailey's life is, is just collapsing around him. He finds himself in Martini's bar, and, and uh, the angel Clarence, you all remember Clarence, is sent by God to, to minister to George, and, and Clarence is trying really hard to help George, and finally George just says in the bar, you know, I just wish I never were born. And Clarence the Angel says, oh, okay, you know, we can, we can make that happen. And, and suddenly, you remember this part of the movie, suddenly the impact of one man upon a community is revealed by that person's absence. And suddenly Bedford Falls becomes Potterville. And suddenly the downtown looks like a red light district with neon lights flashing and kind of uh, ugly and you wouldn't want to be part of it. Uh, and Martini's Bar is now an, an unwelcoming place and people are thrown out on the streets. And it's all because George Bailey wasn't there. Let's now imagine if St. Gregory's was never here in Boca. Now, I'm not suggesting that Boca would suddenly become a red light district. <laughs> I just want to be clear on that. But I wonder what would happen to the people we feed every day. I wonder what would happen in the life of Bondo, Haiti, a school not being there and children not going to school I wonder what this space in the town would look like. I'm sure it would be a mixed development with houses all around. It's Boca, <laughs> you know. I, I wonder how many Christmas Eves, Easter services, faithful worship, church bells ringing every day, just not there. Stephen ministry and pastoral care and grief support groups, not here. A place that really seeks to worship Jesus and, and to practice this radical embracing love of God in Christ that we declare literally on our website, not here. Now think about the miracle that God makes happen through the ministry of St. Gregory's and your giving. It makes a difference. It makes a life-giving difference. It makes a difference in our life, in Boca and beyond. Because that's what God does with our giving. We offer it back to God. God blesses it, breaks it and makes life and justice and mercy and goodness happen. That's the dynamic that we're all part of in giving back to God. Now, I want to say a few personal words and practical words to kind of end this stewardship reflection. Uh, the personal words are, I really want the congregation to hear from me how deeply, deeply grateful I am with your faithfulness in giving. During the pandemic, many churches have really suffered, and they have, not at St. Gregory's. Because of the faithful, generous giving of you and this congregation, we've stayed strong, and healthy and well. And that is really a big story. And I am deeply grateful, and I'll humbly speak for God. Humbly. God is deeply grateful. And so I want you to hear and receive that gratitude. The second thing I want to say, and this is now from a practical standpoint, I am aware, and I hear this a little bit now at St. Gregory's, the rector always has the ear to the congregation. 
I realize we've been asking a lot of you. Um, our capital campaign, which has been going on for now two and a half years during the whole pandemic, we've raised nearly $6 million to do phase one, which is now complete, and to be ready for phase two, which is the interior renovations of, of our church. And we've been asking you about that, and you've been responding. And we are so close. Um, we've made a commitment, and I'm really proud that we've made this commitment that we are not borrowing a dime for anything we do. No debt. We are paying for everything we're doing. And that is a sacred commitment we've made and we're keeping. And I'm really proud of, of, of that. And we are so close now. And so we just sent a letter recently from me saying we're so close uh, to getting to the point where we can then move ahead with our phase two construction. So I want you to know, I know that ask is out there among you. Today, we're focusing on our annual giving, not the capital giving, the annual giving. And it's the backbone of everything we do. And this week, you'll be mailed an absolutely beautiful brochure, and it really is beautiful, that the, the Stewardship Committee has worked on, Bill Lintz, the chair, and the committee has just done a really fabulous job on, on telling the story of St. Gregory's uh, in, in the form of a brochure. You'll be getting that uh, as we kick off today's stewardship season. Uh, you'll be hearing people speak in church. Bill's gonna speak today in a few minutes. You'll be hearing people online in our weekly What's Happening, uh, giving their testimonies and reflections about how St. Gregory's makes a difference. So we're gonna just saturate all of us with stories and uh, prayers and testimonies about the difference St. Gregory's is making. Uh, and so I know that ask is out there. So I just want to give voice that I, I know this. Um, but I want to say this. God is blessing this congregation. And God is blessing what we do. We are making a difference in your life individually, in our congregation's life, our community's life, and in the world's life. And it's worth supporting. And it's worth giving back with gratitude and joy. It's worth striving to uh, meet a tithe and see that as a standard. It, it's worth recognizing that without this congregation, this community and the world would not be the same. That is the truth. But I want to end this repeating a note of joyful gratitude. I realize, as they say, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> you know, you're here and you're giving. And so, thank you. Uh, if, you if you're not a regular giver to St. Gregory's, you know, I encourage you to, you know, take that step. Uh, but I want you to know that I am grateful God is grateful, and there is such blessing in this place. And I hope and believe our stewardship is truly celebrating that blessing. So God bless you all. Amen. Amen. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth of, of all that is, is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the, the only Son of God, God eternally God begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God, light from light, true God, God from true God, begotten, begotten not, not made, of, of one being with the Father. Father. Through him all things were made, for us, for us and, and for our salvation. salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look, look for the, the resurrection, resurrection of the dead and, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. You may add your own petitions at this time. We pray this morning for all our members, praying especially for those on our prayer lists, naming today Laura, Angela, and Isabel, and all those in any need or trouble. We rejoice with Thomas Wood, Eric Leach, Christian Wood, Mason Leach, Gason Beresovi, and Peyton Davis. We're celebrating birthdays. We pray for those celebrating wedding anniversaries. We pray for our companions in Christ in Bondo, Haiti, and the Diocese of Tuliara in Madagascar. We pray, Lord, for the generosity and giving back of this congregation and for your blessing and the way you're making a difference through the ministries of St. Gregory's. Thank you. And I invite your additional prayers and thanksgivings.
Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit as we pray without ceasing, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have, we have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, word, word and deed, by, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace you all and welcome. A warm and loving welcome to all, a special welcome to any visitors or newcomers we have with us. Welcome to our online worshipers as well. Great to be together on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost as we begin our stewardship season. Uh, today, um, after the service at 11.45 uh, in the chapel, our newcomers class begins. So if you're new to St. Gregory's or you're looking to reconnect and deepen your ties to life in Christ here at St. Gregory's, join us for the first newcomers class in the chapel starting at 11.45. I look forward to being with everyone in that class. Uh, next Sunday, we're having a town meeting after each of the services in Harris Hall, and it's a chance to hear a little more detail about how God is doing what God is doing through St. Gregory's and where we're at in terms of our stewardship, where we're at with the capital campaign, uh, and a chance for some conversation and some back and forth. So looking forward to uh, next week's town meeting. Hope you all can take some extra time uh, to be part of that conversation. Uh, just a, a detail or two to add to my stewardship reflection. Uh, as I noted, a stewardship brochure with all the details about uh, our campaign are being, is being mailed out this week. I think it was mailed out Friday uh, to everyone. Uh, take a look at that. November 13th is actually the Sunday where we present our pledges at the altar. Uh, and in the meantime, we'll be having lots of reflection uh, and testimonials about that. So more to come on stewardship. Um, as we look a little bit ahead, I just wanted to note that we've recently started several new support groups at St. Gregory's on the second and fourth Tuesday of the month. We have a grief support group, and on the third Tuesday of the month, that's this coming uh, Tuesday, uh, we have a, a, a ministry for those who've had loss in their lives. Uh, and perhaps are dealing with someone in their family who has an addiction issue. Uh, and it's a chance uh, to gather together and reflect and find healing through those losses. Uh, so that's this Tuesday, uh, and look forward to people taking advantage of this ministry that's led by David Potter, one of our uh, newer members. David, thank you uh, for your leadership uh, on this. Um, as we look a little further down the line in the month, 
Uh, on the last weekend of the month, the ECW is having their annual bazaar, and uh, the church women work really hard on this, and it's a great fundraiser for the church. So uh, I look to have everyone support that, and Rebecca Sorensen and her team, I know, are working very hard for that. That same weekend on Friday night, that's Friday, October 28th, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, Michael Curry, who's really become a bit of a known name in the larger uh, national conversation, which I'm so grateful for because he's so gifted, uh, will be preaching at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Palm Beach Gardens at 5 p.m. as part of our diocesan convention. And everybody's invited to come so you don't have to be at the convention. So if you'd like to hear the presiding bishop uh, preach and be part of uh, your diocesan family gathering for worship, that's Friday night, October 28th uh, at 5 p.m. at St. Mark's. Really looking forward to that myself. Finally, I'd like to invite Bill Lintz to come forward. Bill is our really gifted uh, chair of the stewardship committee, and he wants to share a few words. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Father Andrew. Good morning, St. Gregory's. Good morning. It's good to be here this morning. My main purpose in speaking this morning is to talk about stewardship, but more importantly, I want to also thank you. I want to thank you for your unwavering support of this church and its ministries. Since COVID shut the church down in early 2020, it has not deterred you from supporting this church and its ministries. Last year and this year, many of you increased your giving. Some of you gave a full year in advance, and many of you gave for the first time. And for this, we thank you. We also know that some of you are hurting and doing what you can to support the church. And for this, we are forever grateful. For 2020, 2021, and 2022, the church has run with a balanced budget. Our ministries have thrived, and our staff and clergy have supported us through extraordinary times. To them, we say a very big thank you. This has only been possible, however, because of your unending devotion and support and the grace of God. Why, when many religious organizations are struggling, have you all pulled together? What tugs at your heartstrings to make this happen? Is it our declaration of love that openly welcomes all who are seeking God's love and grace? Is it our worship services that prepare us to move forward in our daily lives with renewed hope? Is it our inspiring music programs with our beloved choir and remarkable music director, Tim? Is it our commitment to our children, youth, and families providing learning and worship in life changing ways? Is it our interfaith work that brings all religions together to build a better community in South Florida? Or is it our programs here in Boca and lands far away, feeding the mind, body, and spirit of those less fortunate? Today marks the start of a new stewardship season at St. Gregory's. Our theme this year is making a difference, a theme that you ought to know well, a theme that you see each week in our Sunday bulletin and what's happening, a theme that speaks from the heart and soul of each one of you a theme that says, this is why I give, and not how much I give. In the weeks ahead, we will hear from a number of you on video and from this lectern on how St. Gregory's and God's love has changed your life. You each will receive a brochure entitled, Making a Difference, with an uplifting message from our rector, Father Andrew. I hope you will spend some time reading through it. You will see there are endless whys on supporting this church and endless rewards received back. November 13th is Pledge Sunday, where we traditionally bring gift commitments to the alder. But let me say, it does not matter how you give. 
There are numerous avenues of financial support, including envelopes, Sunday plate, push pay, text to give, and if you like, you can drop something in Father Andrew's mailbox across the street, which does happen from time to time. We have made a substantial investment as well to bring the best online services and events via the internet. It seems like only yesterday that Father Andrew and Tim did everything from their personal iPhones, remember? Now we have remote controlled cameras with a central station and our good friend Lewis at the controls. I would ask those of you that watch online to help support this effort. One of the beautiful occurrences at this church are new members. We welcome you with open arms and we hope and pray that over time you will also discover the why that tugs at your heartstrings. 2023 will be a challenging budget year for this church. If you have been supporting the church, I pray that you will continue. If you haven't financially supported the church, I hope you will consider it. You will be justly rewarded in so many ways that you never imagined. Let us not forget the beautiful things this church is doing and always remember. In Christ there is no east and west, nor north or south, but one great fellowship of love. And to quote the great English minister and author John Bunyan, you have not lived today until you have done something for someone who can never repay you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and God bless all of you for your tremendous support. Thank you so much, Bill. Birthday blessings, anniversaries. Who's celebrating a birthday or an anniversary? Who'd like to come forward for a blessing? Birthday blessings, anniversary blessings. Looks like Joe and Melanie. It must be uh, anniversary time, birthday time. Is it, is it Addison's? Yeah, yeah, okay. Great, I'm so happy for you. Anne-Marie, one of our new readers, birthday. Looks like we have another anniversary here as well. Wonderful, great. Kay Ann Russell is coming forward for a birthday. Kay Ann, by the way, did a beautiful uh, video for the congregation that you'll see next week, so make sure you watch it. And Kay Ann, it was really beautiful. So let us pray. Good and gracious Lord, we give you thanks and praise for those moments and times in our lives where you are so grateful, so where we are so grateful for your abiding care and love. Bless Melanie and Joe and Kay Ann and Addison and Anne Marie and John and Mira as they celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Keep them rooted, grounded, growing, thriving in your life and love. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. May our Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace this day, this year, and always. Amen. God bless you all. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Yay. Great group. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And to the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for love and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You've united us with Christ and one another, and you've made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Please stand as able for the blessing. <clears throat> May Christ, who is human and divine, who is of heaven and also of earth, lift up your hearts and lives to God. May Christ make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. May Christ's holy, healing, enabling spirit be with you every step of the way and be your guide as your road changes and turns. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and within you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. 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 Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.